Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Now, how did Jesus' name come to bear so much weight and so much authority? Well, we do know that he, I'm going to back into this, that he came and he, um, he, he conquered the enemy. Remember that? We talked about uh, Colossians 2.15. He spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Well, th there's three ways to gain a great name. One is it's, you're born with it. You know, I mean, you know, the Kennedys. They automatically have an inroads to any political arena they want to be in because their last name is spelled K-E-N-N-E-D-Y, Kennedy. It's automatic. It doesn't matter. They're, they're, you know, uh, the Bush is the uh, Republican version of the Kennedys, you know, the Bush family. Because his great-grandfather, Prescott, was a um, politician and in, in all in politics, you know. So they have their, their, that, that's the Republican side of the royal family. Their name just automatically gives them a certain inroads. They're born with it. They're just born with a name. And that name in society, for whatever reason, in that particular society, b bears weight and gives you a certain amount of authority, whatever. So you're born with it. You, so um, you are, that would be, but being born with it being you inherited it. Some people get wealth because they went out and earned it. Some, you know, we use the Kennedys a lot of times because their whole family, they, they, don't, they, don't, um, they don't work. They live off the estate. They don't own the home. The estate owns the home. Okay? It's all set up in a trust. It's all hidden. It's all covered. It's all protected from taxes. And then they want to go to Washington and charge you more taxes because you're making too much money. I say, turn your estate into income and then start paying your fair share, and then I'll talk to you about you raising mine. Come on. Say amen. Um, you know, you're, you inherit. So people inherit things. They all, in that, particularly in that, that family, they all inherit great wealth. They all no, they don't they don't go out and work at McDonald's to, to learn how to work. They don't learn how to work, guys. Because they just live off the money in the estate. Okay? They live a privileged life. Well, you know, when inheritance comes, it belongs to you just because you're born there. Well, Jesus being as, as later called the first begotten, but before the only begotten of the Father, he inherited a great name. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, being most made so much better than the angels, as he by, hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For which of the angels had, said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Chapter 10, verse 5. Wherefore, when he bringeth, he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. Jesus came into the earth, having inherited a greater name than anyone. Okay? Remember, he was even able to, while in his earthly ministry, tell them that in my name, go cast out the devils. The 70s, he commissioned them with his name to go cast out devils. And they came back, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. Remember that? His name even had power when he was on the earth, because he had an inheritance. And there was a limited ability to transfer that at that time. He couldn't do it general wide. He did it with the 70s who were followers of him, and they were walking under his covering. I'll tell you something. If you've, uh, people who live in Tulsa, they always, everybody wants to go start a church in Tulsa. They all want to go to Ramah, and they all want to go down the road and start a church. And they'll get two, 300 people coming down there and helping them run their church because they are, they're, they're all down there. Well, I'm a Ramah grad. Now. Or they'll get on staff for a little while, or they'll get up on the platform a few times, and everybody, oh, they're great, and they'll run down the road because they they, they're, they're more sensitive than Pastor Hagen is, you know. And, you know, you had, you had all these churches starting in Tulsa. You always got them starting up, always starting up. And, uh, they, oh, we've got great faith. Yeah, you're living in Tinseltown. They call it T-Town, Tinseltown. Because back in, the, back in the, the 70s and 80s, then girls all had them hairdos, and they had enough makeup on them to make, make, I mean, their makeup was more, more makeup than, than Tammy Faye could wear in a year. All right? I mean, they, they put it on. Hallelujah. And, um, and I always tell people, let me see you pack up your bags and head out here to Timbuktu and see how you do. Because you're talking about how great your church is, and you're drawing all these rhema people in out of the ministry over there because you've got connections from going to school, and you've got, a few, you got to spit in front of people a few times, and now you're going to go down. You're walking, what is it? You're operating out from under the umbrella of the anointing of that ministry. And they're talking about how successful and how great they are in Tulsa and all that kind of, Yeah, let me see you go do it in 
Podunk, Mississippi, or Artsdale. You know, are you going to be able to go there and be successful? Are you going to be able to go carry out the work and do the things there? Because you know, right now you're operating out from under their umbrella. Now, I said that for this purpose. When that disciples on the earth, when Jesus was physically on the earth, those 70 disciples were operating out from under his umbrella while he was on the earth. He was physically in that general location. And there, so the, the name of inheritance that he received, they were able to function and operate in that in a limited fashion under his spiritual ministry umbrella. Okay? Once he left, that wasn't going to happen. Something else had to happen. Okay? And that's where the Great Commission took place. Because he had inherited a name. Hallelujah. Okay? Um, 2 Corinthians 5.20, he made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Um, he, 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 we, grant, we are granted uh, access to his name, and by his name, we, we're brought into the family of God. Secondly, you receive a great day by bestowal. Now, this makes more sense in a monarchy. Okay? We knight thee, Sir Sean Connery. Okay? You know, the, the, the British were knight actors, you know? Um, uh, what's his name? In the Silence of the Lambs and um, Anthony Hopkins. Sir Anthony Hopkins. He's been knighted. He had bestowed on him the title of Sir. See, he didn't, he didn't inherit it. He didn't conquest to get it. It was that the monarchy bestowed it upon him. Okay? Declared him a knight of the realm of Queen Elizabeth or whatever. You know, and he's, he then has the title of Sir. You know, Elton John got a Sir. I was, <laughs> I was thinking it, but I didn't say it. But he's been knighted. <laughs> How am I going to preach with you doing that kind of stuff? Philippians 2, 9 and 11. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given unto him a name that is above every name. See, now not only did Jesus inherit the great name, then God exalted him and bestowed upon him a great name. Okay? Um, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Now your King James says this, of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things beneath the earth. The word things in the King James is italicized, not in the Greek. Um, it really would be more, more you know, clear to say of beings things don't have knees beings have knees spiritual beings okay angelic beings human beings we all have knees and so really of of beings in heaven of beings and earth of beings they, they, what they're going to bow the knee and um that every tongue so they have knees and tongues so we're talking about entities living entities whether they are Angels, principalities, powers, mights, dominions, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual, I mean, uh, um, archangels, angels, human spirits, uh, God. Uh, every, every being in heaven, earth, and hell will bow their knee at the name of Jesus. The only one who doesn't bow their knee is the Father. The Father is not subordinate to the Son. Okay? And every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, the glory to God. So God gave him a name. He, he inherited a name because he's God's son he had bestowed on him a name because the father bestowed it on him okay so not only is he you know uh king jesus he's also king jesus who is sir king jesus okay and um ephesians 1 17 says this that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give i, I love listen I, I like this prayer i like to pray this prayer hallelujah may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding, now you could take this and make it personal, okay? I'll pray this prayer for people, that the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give unto Ben the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that Ben's eyes of understanding would be enlightened, that he may know what is the hope of your calling and what is the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards him as a believer, Amen? According to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead. That's how you pray it for people. You just change it a little bit and put it first person, put their name in it. Paul was praying it in general to, a, to a, uh, the church. You can make it personal. Make it effective. Amen? 
Um, which he wrought in Christ when they raised him to the dead, set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above, what? All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is deigned. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Now we know this, that, that the names of all of Satan's work are subordinate to the name of Jesus. Because God bestowed on him a name that was above every name. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Also, in the, not only in this world, but also in that which has come. This is, the, his, this is eternal. They're not going to take his name away from him. It's forever. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen? Put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things, what? To the church. Now, here's, now this is kind of weird language, what he's really saying here, the way King James structures stuff sometimes is, you know, it's, it's poetic. King James is very poetic, and the Greek was too, so that's why the King James flowed so well with the Greek, all right? But the, the King James language is very poetic, and so, you know, gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Can I say this? Jesus is the head, but the church carries out the authority, carries out the work. He gave it to Jesus as the head. Now, he's the head, which means what? He retains, he retains eternal control of it and then delegates it to the church in use. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Which is his body that fills him that filleth all in all. Now, the third way is he, he conquered. Now, think about this. You know, they would, they, you know the, Roman, the Roman emperors were sending out guys, and they would become great emperors because their soldiers and their whatever went out and won great battles and all this kind of stuff. And they were, it was just really, you know, all the cool stuff. You know, and they would, you know, they would, uh, you know, Maximus, whoever, uh, I don't know who's in Gladiator, that Maximus Decimus Marius. Meridius. Meridia? Forget it. You got it. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a weird Greek name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyway, it's a good movie. Not very, not very spiritually accurate, but it's still, it's, yeah, so it's a guy movie. All right. Mike Perky was in our own church one time. And he, 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 they brought him a, I brought him a, um, a Pepsi. He turned around and just went like this. Went, <laughs> sat down and finished preaching. I just did it with water. Yeah, you can burp sometime in there. Okay. Jesus got his name first by inheritance. God, he was born of God. He's the first person, the second person of the Godhead, the only begotten of the Father, until he becomes the second, the, uh, the um, firstborn among many brethren. But up until that, he was the only begotten of the Father. Secondly, God bestowed on him that great name. Thirdly, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Colossians 1.13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Jesus conquered. And so when winning generals and would come back from battle, they would, they would get some fancy name from winning and you know, bringing all this back to the, to the empire or whatever. They would have a great name. Jesus conquered. Jesus conquered the enemy and gained his great name. So here we have Jesus name having authority because he inherited it he was bestowed on him and he conquered he has it every reign that you can get the great name he's got it all in his name then he gave us that name to go out and to do it to do what he did with it i think if we got more in tune with give, doing what Jesus did with his name than trying to come up with some cool, make me look really great spiritual with the name, we get more done for the kingdom. Now, you got to understand, I've been in this, for a long, in, in this circle for decades. And we've seen stuff come and go. We've seen stuff come this way and go that way. I mean, as a, as a Pentecostal, I've seen pigs in the parlor come and go at least six times in my life. At least. And it goes in circles. And you, you know, you'll get a whole new generation. All of a sudden, they're reading that book, Pigs in the Parlor, and they're all sitting in a room somewhere vomiting up devils. And you try to come. No, 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 no. You, 
Yeah, I just read that book, Pigs in the... No, 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 no. Burn that book. Because nobody else needs to read it. You know, pigs in the parlor were that, you know, uh, uh, every, every Christian has a demon. Every Christian has a demon. And you have to vomit. And they get a nest in, you've got to vomit it up. And they pass out the bags, and everybody starts vomiting and all this kind of stuff. Dad Hagen had a lady coming to him one time, and she's sitting there with a box of Kleenex going through it while she's talking to him, just foam coming out of her mouth. And, he, and she said, can you help me? He said, what, what's going on? She said, well, I went over to this service, and they were vomiting up devils. And she said, and I, and I tried. And, said, and ever since that meeting, I've had this foam coming out. I go through a box of Kleenex in an hour. Just the foam coming out of mouth. He said, well, you didn't get rid of it, devil. You got one. And he says, now, I can get rid of that, but he said, don't you ever mess with that stuff again. And cast the devil out of her, and she was free from that. It didn't happen anymore. I know one preacher, um, a, good, a friend of ours, who uh, went to preach in a church here in North Carolina. I mean, the, the, guy, the guy used to be in, in our, with our group, and he got way off. He got way, way, way off. They kidnapped somebody. One they kept him in the man's wife in the basement for three weeks trying to get the devil out of her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Went up on the um, he he went up on the church service to preach and said, "I cast twenty six devils out of myself this morning." Before I came to church, now I want to tell you something. If I ever get up and say I cast twenty six devils out of myself before I came to church, bragging on the fact I'm clean enough to preach to you, you need to get up and run. You know why? Because it's the one I didn't get. You should be concerned about. There might be 27 in there, and he's still in there, you know. And I'm gonna preach and get him all over you. <clears throat> and then, you know, and, that, and then another service in, that, in this meeting, he's on the way to the platform. His wife came and jumped on. She was the one who really got off on this stuff. Jumped on him, attacked him, and started casting the spirit of gluttony out of him before he preached. Jumped on him while he's on the way to the platform. And then the um, and then the guest speaker grabbed him and cast the spirit of lust out of him. Got home, started eating lunch. The man was eating too much. She said, I thought I cast that spirit of gluttony out of you. Yeah. He says, and, and he, he, he was trying to make a joke. I said, well, seven more worse than the first came. Yeah, but yeah, uh huh. No, see, we start doing crazy stuff. Like I said, Pigs and Paul has been around about six or seven times. Well, so, and that's how I got off with all that. I'm sorry. It's been around since I was a little, I remember as a little kid in the Pentecost church, that coming through the circles, coming through the circles. Everybody's talking about pigs in the parlor, pigs in the parlor, pigs in the parlor. You don't have to. We, there's nowhere in the Bible. They, now, in some places, somebody actually, you know, they, 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 they fell to the ground and they were, he, it was a froth and that, or, or some kind of whatever event going on. Jesus just said, shut up and come out. He didn't sit there and have a conversation and had this whole uh, debate about, you know, what's in there. And how, one time he asked the devil his name. And he knew by the Holy Ghost he was dealing with more than one. And he said, Legion, for we are many. You know, that's the, on, that's the only time. Have you come 20 minutes before the time? Hold your peace, come out. He wouldn't suffer them to speak. And they got people running around having, you know, vomiting services. And you wonder why a lot of the church world stays away from Holy Ghost people. Because in our Holy Ghost churches, there's an element of squirrels. There's some nuts out there. We have, you don't, you don't have Baptists puking to get rid of devils. Hello? And I'm going to tell you, we, we, we got some granola Christians. That is fruits, nuts, and flakes all packaged together in the same box. Okay? We have it. And it's all because of not rightly discerning and rightly understanding our use and our authority according to the Word of God. And we get, we get out here in the realm of being spiritual without being balanced in the written Word. So we need to operate from the platform that the written word is the basis from which we function. Even when the Holy Ghost is leading us, even when we're walking in power and authority, it is still in line with and on the platform of the written word of God. And we don't, and he does not contradict himself. And we do not, we do not function contradictory to the word of God. 
So when Jesus has a name that's given by inheritance, by bestowal, and by conquest, and he gives it to the church, then we are to go out and do with it what the master did. He was led by the Spirit. But his leading of the Spirit was always in line with the Word. And so we take that name that is above every name. Now, I, I, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, you, can, you have authority many times when people are in your presence. But you can't extend that authority when they leave. They have to do something. Hello? Now, I, I, sometimes when I'm going to encounter certain situations, maybe you go into a certain situation, you've got a family member that's, um, or they're, they're going to bring a guest that you know is, is obstinate, going to be a problem. I just say, now, Father, while I'm there, they can't fun that spirit can't function. Now, while I'm in the room, because I have authority where I am, but I can't bind that authority and, you know, and cast it into the pit and declare them free and they'll never have another trouble the rest of their life if they want it. I can't cast it out of them. They got to want to be free. Amen? Amen? So we don't need to make grandiose statements. How many got Facebook? How many see some of these preachers on Facebook? I decree that the entire body of Christ. And they put this whole litany of stuff for the day. And it all sounds good. But it doesn't work. Because, number one, I have to, as a believer, and, and on, on most, most of the time, I'm going to be the one having to exercise my own authority. What we have done, now I'm, I'm just talking to you, from, I'm not, I don't have any notes for this. What we have done with some of this is we've taken principles of intercession and tried to bring them around and exercise them as a faith decree. We go to the intercessory seminars. And they all get in there, I'm, I'm an intercessor. And that's the whole thing about intercession. You have to get into the Spirit of God. You have to pray out by the Holy Ghost the will of God and then allow Him to go work it. Amen. And, in, and in that moment, if He grants you a manifestation of special faith, it's a gift of the Spirit, yeah. divided sovereignly as He wills, See, this is where we, have, we get mixed up sometimes. We take things that happen because of the gifts of the Spirit or they're because of, an, of another principle, and we bring them over and try to apply them in an arena that they don't work in. We get upset or we get, messed, we get off track. We, get, we, get, we, get, um, we start trying to do things that we shouldn't be doing. Okay? So you might be in intercessory prayer. And let me say this. I've talked to other ministers who, who, are, who are aged, who are, who are more mature than me in spiritual things in the past. We talked about intercession. And um, we were just talking about, I was talking about some of the issues that I saw with it. Because you, you, go, you go to a, a certain meetings, you have people down there, the intercessors down at front, and they'll be all, they're putting on a show. And I follow so and so around. And, you know, where you should be is in the back room. Because this is done in secret. See, it was a show. See, people got, we, we took what should have, was supposed to be in the closet and put it out in the forefront. And then people started teaching. You can't teach people how to intercede. Amen. The Holy Spirit has to lead you into that. You yield yourself. And there's nothing wrong with a group meeting if you're interceding. But I would say it, it would be a smaller group. Okay? Doing certain, praying out things and praying together. But to get into the Spirit helpeth us with groanings which can have, you know, the Bible says which groanings which cannot be uttered, King, a Greek which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. The Holy Spirit comes. What's this got to do with authority? A lot. The Holy Spirit will come and lead us into intercession. And in that place, there are going to be times that God will lead you to do certain things. And there will be a manifestation of special faith, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, 
And, and, and if we don't discern that properly, we'll think, well, man, I just decreed such and such, and it happened. And we'll think, now we, got, we can go out here and use faith and start doing the same thing, which really that was a manifestation of special faith at that moment by the unction of the Holy Ghost that you can't walk out of here and just go do it outside that moment because it's a manifestation of the Spirit. But we turn right around and try to begin to function on that over here. Am I, have I lost anybody? Right over here in this realm of, of what we call regular faith. Now, I understand it's, it's, there's nothing regular about it. It's supernatural. It's God. It, it's a, it, it came to us. God dealt to every man the measure of faith. But the, but the faith we're given to live by and to walk in and to exercise our authority in as an everyday believer is not the same as the gift of special faith. They're... they're, they're it looks the same and sounds the same, but one is unctioned by the Holy Ghost, usually in an arena that you wouldn't have normal authority in. But it's a manifestation of the Spirit. Okay? And so what we end up doing is we end up trying to take something that was an unction of the Spirit. At that moment, you're granted an authority to function and do things you can't normally do. Walk on water. You can't normally do that. Well, I'm going to be like the disciples, and you're going to get wet. Put on your swim trunks before you try it. Well, that shows a lack of faith. There's no Bible for you walking on water. It was in a moment that Jesus was, you know, we, we could get into all that. Now, when we take that, and we come over to here to our everyday walk and our everyday faith, and we, we've had that experience. This is why we have to have the written word. And this is why we've got to go back to the written word. Because we'll experience things in the Spirit that at that moment was granted to us by a gift of the Spirit, a manifestation of the Holy Ghost, a special endowment for that moment. And then we try to bring that over and try to use it like it's carte blanche over here in our regular walk. And we start going around decreeing and declaring and saying and speaking. And, saying, and all of a sudden, things aren't happening. And we get frustrated spiritually. We become, um, we, we, we begin to, well, what happened? Well, I know I got faith. I mean, I know this happened with me before. You see? And now we begin to undermine, and, and here, people have gone out and taught these things. Ministries have gone out and tried to teach these things. And people try to mimic it because they've been taught well, if I can do, I can do this. I can say that. I can, you know, you know. But you, you'll get, I'll get young Christians come in sometimes. I got, got Jesus showed me I got enough faith. I can empty the hospital. And I'm thinking, no, bozo, you can't. If the master couldn't do it, you can't. It doesn't mean it's not God's will to heal those people. It means you just can't go in there and empty out the hospital. Just to, you know, come in there. Whoa, I got the, the the ointment on me today. Woo! and slap it all over everybody. Was anybody less anointed than Jesus? Or more anointed than Jesus? You know what the Bible says about Jesus? He had the Spirit without measure. There was no limitation to how much of the Holy Spirit operated in Jesus. <coughs> and as Dad Hagen used to say, inferring we have it by measure. <coughs> I've heard people say, well, I have all nine gifts of the Spirit operating in me. Really? Study, study church history, study people, study the Bible. We don't see anybody that operates in all gifts of the Spirit except Jesus. They're divided to the church severally as He wills. He don't... Now, it doesn't mean you couldn't be using all of them at any given time, at any point in time. It just means you don't walk around with them. And most people were not operating all nine in their entire... My probably were operating more than three or four. Maybe just one or two in their entire life. Well, I will not... No, 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 no. See, it's his will. We had to stay prayed up. We had to stay submitted. We had to be ready to be used. And if he wants to use us that way, great. If he doesn't, hallelujah. I'm going to go on and do what he has for me to do. I'm going to, you know, however he wants to use me, that's what I'm submitted to. Not that I, well, 
I, I found out people really get some, get some, uh, some oohs and some ahs when you give a word of, you know, where you're going and what you're doing. And I want to prophesy. <clears throat> you probably shouldn't be prophesying. Because you're going to throw a bunch of your own into it. Hello? I said, hello? You're going to start coming up with stuff and saying stuff just because it's in your, in your psyche. We, 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 want to, we want to be effective in the kingdom. So if we, if we follow the word and the things I'm talking about this morning and understanding our authority, we won't we, and, and, and realize that experience you had with God where he used you that way may be a one-time life event. I've had two visions in my life. I've been in ministry for 35 years. I've had two visions. Love to have more. <clears throat> one was concerning this church. And one was that girl I got baptized in the Holy Ghost that came to that church service. That was that that was the one that stands out more than anything to me. I mean, seeing the person walk in, seeing the building you hadn't been in, <clears throat> seeing the person walk across the back of the building and sit in a certain seat, and seeing you do certain things when it happened, <clears throat> and every and, and when she walked in, I knew who she was. I saw. I'm, I just stopped. Three nights ago, I was praying, and I saw you come in that door, walk across there, sit in that seat, saw me stop the service, point you, say, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? She said, no. Nope. I said, come on down here. God said he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. She got up, ran down there. She didn't just wait. In Pentecostal, we talked, we had to tarry. By the time I got my hand on her, she was speaking in tongues. I'd never seen her since. But I, did, I knew who she was. Well, see, boy, we like to have that every service. Every service, you know exactly who's coming and what God's going to do. Oh, that's God. And I'm not saying he won't do it again. But I can't base my ministry on, okay, well, we're going to just go to church and wait for God to show me who, what he's going to do this time. <clears throat> now, that was a wonderful experience. God showed me how real he is. Now, I've had other things happen. I had, I've had um, uh, words of the Lord come. I had a word, of, uh, a word for Brother Copeland one time. I'm sitting out at Ramah. I'm over on the the left side and the angle seats about seven rows back. I'm sitting there. Brother Cope was up. At that time, they, they would put all the guest speakers up in the choir loft on the platform. They still had the choir loft up there. I say choir loft. It's rise. It was just raised up seating, okay? And the choir would sit up there. When they had winter Bible seminar, the guest speakers would sit up there. Brother Cope was up there, right on the front row. I look up at the Brother Cope, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, I had a word for Brother Cope. And, of course, I'm sitting out there going, Lord, then it's a right. I'm some young whippersnapper right here. If I head to that platform, the Rama military usher guard will take me down. I know this. I have seen those guys in action. I know what they're going to do. I'm going to be in some back room somewhere, bound up, taped up, and all this kind of stuff. I know what's coming. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm patting my foot because it keeps getting stronger, and it keeps getting stronger, and it keeps getting... But here's, that word was there, but something was missing called unction. I had, man, I had flowed in the gifts of the Spirit. I knew that was something, all, it's all over me. I know that what this word is. It's just, it's just all over me. And I'm sitting there, and I'm str how am I going to do this? How's it going to work? You're going to have to make a door. And about that time, Brother Hagin turns around and said, Kenneth, come here. And he, and he began to minister to him, and he began to give him verbatim what I'm sitting out there with. And I went, first thing I did was, <laughs> not going to the back room today. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Now, I'm not getting tackled. The military guard's not coming after me. Woo, definitely do right. Does not get a shot today. Secondly, so I went, Shoo. then I was thinking, thank you, Lord. You taught me your voice in a deeper way than I've ever known. Because I knew what you wanted to say to Brother Copeland. I mean, it was all over me. Hallelujah. I got it all over me. Hallelujah. I knew exactly what I wanted to say. It, you talking about bearing witness to your spirit. 
So when Brother Hagin began to speak that, I'm sitting there going, uh-huh, 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 yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> you got it, Dad, go ahead on. As a matter of fact, I'm really glad you're doing it. <laughs> but it taught me that I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It gave me more confidence in walking with God and following, following the leading of the Spirit. <laughs> He's leading me to go to 1 o'clock today. All right. But see, when we have those experiences, we have, to, we have to weigh them against the Word and make sure that they fit into our life. See, I had that vision. I know God speaks to me. I know God can give me visions. I know God, when I had that experience with Brother Copeland, you know, there at that, in that, in that event where Brother Hagin gave the word, but I had it before Brother Hagin ever turned around. I had it strong. Now, I can walk through my walk of regular life. You understand what I'm saying? My faith walk, my daily walk, with a confidence that if God needs to talk to me and give me something, he can give it to me. I don't try to dream it up. I know his voice. I'm available. I love services where we lay hands on people. The word Lord comes. I mean, we got people laid all over the place. I kind of say, ooh, praise God. But we don't do it because it'll stir up emotion. We don't do it to get the crowd excited. I'm mature enough in the Lord to know I can mess you up giving, laying hands on you and giving you a word that's not from God. That's from my soul. Hello? I said, hello? We want, we want to make sure we're walking with God. So what do I do now? We start from the platform of doing what the Word says with the, the name of Jesus. It was a bee. It's a bug. It's a dead bug. I mean, that is a one dead bug. We, we're going to we're gonna raise it from the dead. <laughs> so what do we do now? Now, we love the experiences where God's done something, but we don't want to take those experiences and, and then interject them into a place they don't belong. Now, in the, we, can take, we, can take, we can glean. We hear from God. God told me to do something. I know I can hear from God. In the right time. So I'm going to so go over here. And I'm going to do with the name of Jesus. What the word teaches me I can do with it. Now if he comes. And, when, and I'm, I'm in a place where he says. The, the manifestation of the spirit comes. And says do this with it. As long as it still lines up with this. Then I can go do it. But I'm not just doing that at random. I'm empty out the hospital today. I'm going in. We're going to go empty out the hospital. Uh, young people a lot of times. They're so causative oriented. You know, that's what, college, that's what college professors take advantage of. They take that desire to, do, to be causative and to do things and to make a difference, and they misuse it to brainwash them into stupid thinking and, and turn them into, you know, we're, we're anti, we're greenies. We believe that the planet's going to... The planet is bigger than your automobile. Amen. This planet is going to make it. We don't need fossil... Who do you think put the fossil fuels there? <laughs> Hello. The dinosaurs. The dinosaurs. <laughs> Who created them? Yeah. You know? The acquisition of wealth is horrible. Who do you think put the gold there? Amen? Yeah. The plant's 90-some percent water, whatever percent water. We're going to run out of water. No, 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 no. We're not going to run out of water. Our ice, thank God for ice machines. Yeah, the, the polar ice, they found out Antarctica is, is, has not shrunk at all. They, they've proven it hadn't shrunk at all. Got, gotten bigger. And the, the Arctic has, you know, anyway, this, that, that, some of that stuff is crazy. But they take advantage of the young people. We get young Christians who come in and they want to do something, and Satan takes advantage of it. That's why we as older Christians need to be stable ourselves. So we can put our arm around and say, you know what? you got such zeal. And yeah, God wants to use you. Now, let's see what the Bible says do. And let's go to the Word. And now, take all that zeal and put in 
word-directed action and be effective. Yeah, go, go share Jesus. Go preach the gospel to every creature. Amen? And you don't take up a bottle of strychnine and drink it. If you get accidentally poisoned, you'll live. If you get bit by a snake accidentally, you'll live. You don't, you don't handle snakes. You don't do it on purpose. Thou shalt, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Unless you're going to make shoes. Unless you're going to make shoes. You gotta, you know, uh, listen. I am of the, of the persuasion snake's head off is the best position for everything to be. All right? So we're going to take our authority that is granted to us, as, as again, I say, in a limited fashion. We mean limited. It, we do with it what the master wants us to do with it, which is what the word teaches us to do with it, not what we feel. Now, we've got to learn the difference between feelings and, and, and really Holy Ghost speaking. Amen. We need for you to become mature. Why? Because what God wants to do, and what we're going to be focusing on in 2017, is you becoming disciplers. We need to be bringing people into the kingdom and you discipling them. In what? The fundamental doctrines of Christ. Teaching them how to walk up, teach them how to be good believers. You can't teach them to intercede. If you, don't, if you, if you take a baby Christian and stick them in some of that stuff, they'll get squirrely. And we don't want them to get squirrely. We want them to learn and grow and mature. I'm, I believe in intercessors, but I believe it's a, it's a closet ministry. And it's one that, that people need to grow in the things of God and mature in and learn. See, if you learn to be led by the Holy Spirit, you can, you can be led into intercession. And we know, what do we, think? we learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. We always know it lines up with the written word. Hello. Amen. You get anything? So we got some. Three of you? Four of you? Anybody else get anything? Okay. Everybody get some? Where'd that come from? That came from the Holy Ghost, because I didn't have that in my notes. And I wasn't thinking about it before we came to church. I ain't thought about none of well, I said, the things I said this morning. When we got over here talking about experience. I never really articulated any before. That was the Spirit of God just taking up. God, Brother Copeland, Winter Bible Seminar, not Winter Bible Seminar, Alumni Week two, 1982. We had gone back. Jamie and I got married. and I graduated from Raymond in 81. Came home. We got married. I know we're running late. We'll get it all done. Okay? Cool. Great. Came back home. Got married. The next year, went out to Alumni Week in Tulsa. We used to have Alumni Week. That was a separate week. It was, we didn't have, you know, it's it when everybody came home. All the people came home to Alumni Week back then. Then they put it together with our Bible seminars, some, some different things now. But um, Brother Copeland was there. Brother Copeland ministered. <laughs> that week, T.L. Osborne ministered. Brother Copeland ministered. Um, Brother Hagen, uh, Pastor Hagen, and I forgot who others. I think Jerry, maybe it's Jerry Seville, all preached that week at Alumni Week. We had a stacked Alumni Week. And, um, but we got in there, you know, you stand in line and get a seat. We got our seat, and we were on the second row in Rooker Memorial Auditorium on the, the first slanted section on the second row, and right in front was Kenneth and Gloria. Well, he was sitting there waiting to preach, and he preached that night. And while he was preaching at the end of the sermon, he began to prophesy about the, the coming glory of the Lord on the earth. Oh, yeah. That was when, you know, the, he's talking about the glory coming and what God's going to do. And he walks over to that second row, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually it's on this side. I'm, I'm standing there with Janie. She's already checked out the glorious toenails. They're, they're painted. She's already figured out what kind of toenail polish she's wearing and stuff. Not that she's going to run home and get the power nail polish, but, you know. And he's preaching, and he's talking about the glory, and he walks right at me and looks me right in the eyes. You know, them, them Cherokee eyeballs, I think blue. He, he puts it in. He said, he's talking about the glory. He says, and you and I will see it together. I could slap you down. Let's, let's take it back a little bit here. <laughs> I'm thinking, it's a coming. The glories are coming. I was in the Czech Republic in 1994, I believe it was. Hallelujah. See, Brother Copeland prophesied in 82. That we're going to, that 
I know he's speaking generally, but he looked me in the eye and patted me on the face and said, you and I will see it together. I'm... Give you the hum hum Glory to God. I was in the Czech Republic teaching at the Mata Bible School there in Prague. And um, we were just having a, a powerful time in the Lord, just preach, preaching like a machine. Oh, my goodness. I mean, Europeans have never seen anything like me most of the time. Maybe now, but back then, that they, I, I was an anomaly. And most of the people that came and taught in the Bible schools were, were, were teachers. And they loved for me to come because I, you know, especially later in the year because they already had the teaching, they had all that foundation, they had all that word, and here come the Holy Ghost guy. I mean, the wild Holy Ghost guy. I'd, I mean, in Estonia, I was standing on the tables and they would just look at you. Because you're talking about stoic. A bunch of old Vikings over there. They are, they're, old Vi they're a whole bunch of old Vikings. Estonia is a bunch of Vikings. And so I'm in Prague, but I'm in Prague. And I'm preaching, and at the end of the service, I get over in the, in, the, in the Holy Ghost and just begin to speak in the Spirit. And I'm just standing there speaking in the Spirit, not thinking, well, and, you know, got done and didn't, didn't have an interpretation. We are thinking, well, now the Bible says, you know, let them speak, you know, if they don't have interpreters, let them hold their peace. Well, I, I interpret all the time. I didn't have one. Well, at the end of the service, Class, it's supposed to be class, but it was a service. <laughs> One of the students came up and started talking to the Bible school overseer. Um, oh, gosh, I forgot their names right now. Great people. They're really good people. Um, and um, just their names just slipped me right. I, I can see his face. I can see her face. I know who they are. And as soon as somebody says their name, I'll go, what? No, that's, that's Estonia. Um, um, they, they actually, uh, they've been to our church before. And uh, Larry and Angela Keaton, the Keatons. Okay. Yeah, Larry, Larry, so one of the students comes up to Larry and starts talking to him. Starts, she's talking in, in, um, in Czech, so he has to get, a, get an interpreter to come over and says, and they're, they're telling him, and he said, um, we understood what he said. <laughs> and I, of course, when I heard that, I stepped over. <laughs> okay? What did I say? Because I'm wondering why I don't have an interpretation. Well, they understood what I said. Didn't need one. Now, see, this is where the tongues weren't just a, a tongues for the purpose of interpretation. I was speaking their language. And I had no idea I was speaking their language. I was just praying in tongues. I was praying out in tongues. And she said, he kept saying, I see it. I see it. The glory is on the horizon. I see it on the horizon. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. That's 1994. It's coming. See, spiritual things aren't the same as natural. Timetables in the spirit aren't the same as they are in the natural. When God showed me I would go to the Orient to preach in 1981, it was 1999 before I stepped foot into Bangkok, Thailand to preach. Hello? It, it was years. But in the spirit, it was just like that. You see? And so I, I was I see it. I see it. I see the glory. It's on the horizon. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. God's glory is coming. We can get frustrated. And a lot of, I'm going to make a statement and we're going to quit. We got to quit. We got to load up. We got to get these chairs put away. A lot of churches settled for the substitute of the devil to be popular and to do the cool things instead of being patient for the outpouring that will bring the great harvest in. Because they weren't growing, they switched venues and they switched gears and they switched directions and they don't see the need of the baptism of the Holy Spirit anymore and they don't need to see the need of praying in tongues anymore and they don't need to see, they don't see the need of being sensitive to the Spirit anymore and they don't see the need for exercise on our authority anymore. They just want to go have a good time and have a fog show, a light show, a, a rocking, you know, a cool, and I love good worship, but you know, I like good worship. But I love Holy Ghost worship. When the anointing is manifest. And we have got so many of the churches in America in particular who have veered to the realm of pleasing man that God is wanting, saying, have patience for the precious fruit of the earth because I'm going to send the rain 
the former and the latter rain in the first month. We're going to have the great end gathering. God told me, I see the glory. I've seen it in the spirit. It's coming. It's coming. He prophesied to me in, you know, in that time. Hey, I know he's talking to me. I'm just talking to general, but he's talking to me too. I don't believe what he, of all the people in that building, Brother Cub walked right over to me and looked me in the eyeball and then patted my face. <laughs> I'm about to touch Melanie. Brought back a nub. Anyway, you will see the glory together. And then I was in, that, and I was in check, and they, they heard me say it in, in check. Now, they've been, you just don't sp pick up check. They actually say about check, that it was one of the languages that was just left over. Okay, they, they kind of have a own joke about their own language. It's, it's so bad. But I'm speaking to them in check. I see it. I see, I see the glory. It's coming. It's on the horizon. It's on the horizon. The glory is coming. And this is why we need to be stable and mature so that when those experiences in the spirit begin to just hit us, we don't pick it up out of this place and go try to stick it over here and make it work when it's not supposed to work over here. It's yeah. supposed to work right here with the unction of the Spirit, with the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. And then we can, we can walk out of that and walk back into our daily walk with the Lord and live by faith and not by sight and use the name of Jesus the way the Bible teaches us to use it. But then when God moves us over here and we have an unction, we go with that. And then we become mature and God can now trust us I could go on, but we have to quit. I love you. Praise God. We speak blessing over you. We speak life over you. In Jesus' name, be here Wednesday. Don't forget about the kids' clothes. 5T, coat, I mean shirts, pants, size 11 shoes, toy if you want to, special offering to buy the, their lunch with. Glory to God. Next Sunday is happy birthday Jesus offering. Glory to God. Anybody have any needs? Anybody need me to pray for you for sickness, disease, anything before we go? Hallelujah. We need to stack the chairs seven high. Praise the Lord. Eat up, blah, blah, blah. Love you. Glory to God. Have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday and next Sunday. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.